and welcome back to the Five Fancy Show. This is a look back a little bit on game week 12, but more focusing, Joe, on game week 13 Huge. this weekend. Game week 12 wasn't the highest scoring game week. Um, how did you get on? Who yeah. were your main players that returned? Because I didn't have that many. Very mid. Obviously, a lot of people will have been in the same situation as us, benching a lot of Manchester yeah. City and Arsenal players because there was a blank for their game week. Very mid for me overall. Yeah. I mean, Pope, Trippier. Trippier yeah. is just a beast for my FBL team. A lot of people captained him. Smart. It's That's very really smart. smart. I captained Callum Wilson. He didn't return on the day. I captained Harry Kane. He didn't return on the Massive day. Massive blank. But yeah, so and we both had Wilfred Zaha. So yes. that, was, that was a pretty good one well, because I remember I was I was saying that I was well I put on Twitter that I was may, maybe thinking about doing Salah bringing in Salah and Eze so when I saw Eze score the first goal I was like no so yeah. I was so happy when Zaha got the goal and he picks up a couple of bonus as well so yeah I was a little bit disappointed with Jared Bowen I've got Jared Bowen obviously missed penalty costing me quite a few points mm. there ended up with zero when probably could have been a return of seven or eight yeah. uh, so that was pretty disappointing overall just a very mid game week but some big results and some big learnings I think particularly Manchester United versus Tottenham well, which I want to talk about that's where we're going to go next obviously I want to talk about that because Man United absolutely crushed Tottenham that could have finished 5 or 6 nil yesterday and I think there are some assets that we should be talking about coming out of that game one of which is called Bruno Fernandes yeah um, he created so many chances especially Ten in chances that first in half but my worry is no one's finishing them off you, you spoke on this exact show he last scored. week he's finished know, them off I'd himself Liv finished off one chance you can't create a chance. Well, I suppose you can create a chance and finish it off. But you were saying how poor Man United's conversion rate is. And I think that game against Spurs is almost another example of that yeah. in terms of you had 30 shots yeah. in the first half. I know. And you you didn't score a, a goal. And is that... I mean, is that worrying for you or not really? You came away with a 2-0 win, but is that worrying? Uh, not massively. I think United do need a striker. It's fairly obvious. But I think Marcus Rashford looked extremely dangerous. He was getting in positions to create and score score goals. And if it wasn't for an absolutely inspired Hugo Lloris, some unreal saves yeah. in there, he would have. So at least we're creating the opportunities. And I feel like eventually they are going to start going in for Marcus Rashford. So we can look here, Joe, at some Marcus Rashford numbers. Now, when you look at his returns, they're not necessarily yeah. the, the greatest. However, load up them fixtures. Load up them fixtures because, you know, I look at Chelsea away. Obviously, that's a tough fixture. I know being a Chelsea fan, Marcus Rashford has definitely enjoyed playing Chelsea yeah. across across the years, although both both uh, the last four games have been draws. So I am probably expecting a draw at Stamford Bridge on Saturday. But after that, I mean, I look at that. I don't think West Ham at home should be a green fixture because on their day, yeah, that's tough. that's quite deceiving. They I gave think. Liverpool some problems yesterday. But when you look at the next five, yeah. Aston Villa, Fulham, Nottingham Forest, Wolves and Bournemouth. Yeah. And you have to say that you're looking at a player who's likely to start every, single every game. game, given the situation around Cristiano Ronaldo, of course, not only left the pitch early last night from the substitute bench, but left the stadium early as well that looks like a pretty ugly issue and if that's the case and Martial isn't fit yet then it's pretty likely Marcus Rashford is going to start even if Martial is fit mm. Marcus Rashford is going to probably start on that left hand side where Jadon Sancho is but I'm I'm still I'm still very convinced by Bruno Fernandes if he wasn't so expensive he'd be a, a nailed on for me but this is the problem is that he is expensive. 9. He's 9.8 million. He's only in 2% of teams. But um, for, for someone that you're spending 9.8 million on, yeah. you can't have only returned in three games this season. Yeah, out of, I know. Out of 10. Uh, is it 11, I think? There's a couple missing there. Maybe 10 games. But I just... He's maybe one player that you maybe give a few weeks, give the Chelsea game, and maybe give that West Ham game. Because mm. if he can keep it up... And you still are creating all these chances. If you build off that performance against Spurs and actually bring it to Chelsea and into the West Ham game, then he could be a good option. However, when you look at the other options, Rashford's the, the most obvious one, isn't he? Yeah. And I think a lot of people are probably going to opt for Rashford over Bruno. And I think that's fair. Yeah. What do you think about Diogo Dalot? As I think well? he's a very, very, very good, cheap. At very, very, million. very good option. Very good option. Um, so he's back to back returns, but. You know, there's a double digit haul in there. There's another eight pointer in there for 4.6 million. I do think his price is going to rise again because I think a lot of people now looking yeah. at those Man United fixtures are going to get him in. But if you need a player that's going to play every single week and he's involved going forward as well, heavily, heavily involved. And I, he's only got one assist. I feel like that's quite deceiving because I feel like, I know the amount of crosses he puts into the box and how involved he is in those Man United attacks. I think he's a great option. I mean, for me, unfortunately, my defence probably isn't the situa isn't the, the part of my team where I need to sort mm. out the most. However, in a few game weeks' time, when you get into that West Ham and 
Bournemouth and Wolves and, and Forest and all those games, that could be where yeah. I upgrade maybe a four to a 4.6 if I have the money in the bank. Yeah, he's created the second most chances in the Manchester United team behind Bruno Fernandes. This, this conversion rate is really well. frustrating. Yeah, it I mean, is. it's frustrating for me. I don't have any players She's in my team. Be a United fan. Yeah, I was going to say it must in be. the last two games <laughs> That's and we've like scraped that past. That is ridiculous. Both times, but it's coming. It feels like something's building and it's building ahead of a massive fixture this weekend, which we should move on to, right? Man United yes, versus Chelsea. We should. So Chelsea against Manchester United, big game on Saturday, 5.30 kickoff that Joe can't watch, not a very good fan. Anyway, I'll be in the away end at home. Oh no, I'll be in the, the home end. end. <laughs> oh yes. I'll be in the home Lives end. true colours I'll be in the through. home end. Do you want to actually tell everyone what you predict for the game? I think United are going to win the game. What, 3-0, like you said, off air? Or? I didn't say 3-0 Yes, he, yes, he did. I think, yes. you know, I think oh, I'm pretty you're confident. Going back. I, I pretty said confident. put your money where your mouth is and he's not putting his money where his mouth is. Okay, do you think you're going to win the game? Yeah. You changed your tune as well because you said you weren't off camera. Well, the last four have been draws. So, I mean, my head's pointing to a draw, but obviously I, I do think we can beat you on our day. Okay, so you take Chelsea, I'll take United. We'll have 10 okay, fine. Draws fine, void. Fine, okay, fine, fine. Anyway, let's get into the fantasy um, talking points because one big talking point from Chelsea is the emergence of, or resurgence, is that resurgence, the resurgence? I would of say, yeah. Kepa Arisa Balaga. Crazy. Um, now, he's already risen in price. A lot of people have jumped on him on a wild card, which 4.4, now 4.5. Five, I think it's four now, maybe five clean sheets in a row in all competitions. Um, but Only two percent ownership though, the, and the save points. This is what I mean because <laughs> Chelsea's defense has been without Thiago Silva. Chelsea just, just it's it's actually crazy how much of an impact he makes. Yeah. And without him, we just become so almost like lost in defense. I don't think there's pe like there's, we know what to do, and and we have given up so many sh like chances mm. over the last couple of games, and it it's only because of Kepa. That, that Chelsea have actually come away with a three points against Villa and then a point against Brentford. Yeah. But three returns in a row. Now, if you want to save money, I mean, a starting goalkeeper at a top six club for 4.6 million and Chelsea mm -hmm. are keeping clean sheets now, which we haven't done for ages. So if you need to save money, Kepa could be your option. I mean... They're not that bad fixtures, or do you think they, they, I think do the they are? I think the fixtures are tough for Chelsea. I think the fixtures are really tough for Chelsea. I think Man United Actually, yeah. is a tough fixture. Brighton, uh, away, Brighton maybe not. Uh, not massively convinced about so mm. far under De Zerbi, but still, you know, a tough place to go. The Amex historically over the last couple of seasons, we know how good Arsenal have been, and Newcastle are playing really, really well. I think St James's Park is probably one of the hardest away fixtures in the league, yeah. just because of the atmosphere and the things that are happening up there. So. Although I really like Kepa, he's probably, for me, going to be one to consider Maybe slightly after later. The, after the World Cup. Exactly. When you look at those two fixtures I'm happy after the Pope. World Cup. I'm happy with yeah, Pope. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got Nick Pope and I'm probably not going to downgrade Nick Pope to, to, to Kepa anytime soon. What about this man? Well, I mean, the back-to-back the -back double digit hauls in game week 10 and 11 were pretty good. I mean, yesterday, I think we struggled. He didn't really get on the ball very much, mm -hmm. which... Um, uh, sorry, at the time of filming, it, it was last night, the, the, yeah, the yeah. Brentford game. But um, yeah, we didn't really get him involved enough. He, Brozier had a chance where he could have he got the ball stuck under his foot and Mace was literally open in the six yard box. Yeah. And he could have. So it, the, you know, the potential, I think he's going to play. He came off um, after after 60 minutes. So that's a, like half an hour rest. He did look a little bit tired. He started every game under Graham Potter. So you absolutely know he's going to be starting against Man United on, okay. on Saturday. Um I couldn't decide whether to go for Trossard, whether to go for Mace. I think he's he's going to start every game, but it's whether you've, you know, 7.7 .7 mil, he's around that Bowen. We've had this conversation before. There's price, probably, yeah. probably, price. yeah, probably other options. But again, maybe, maybe Chelsea ass assets are just worth staying away from until after the World Cup, yeah. where you've got a nice run of games there. Man City's chucked in there, but but two home fixtures against Bournemouth and Palace and Forest away. So maybe Ch maybe hold off on Chelsea assets. But if you've got Chelsea assets, let us know what you're going to do with them. Are you going to keep for these run of fixtures or are you going to sell? Moving on to another team that are in form then, Liverpool. Obviously a bit of a shaky win against West Ham mm. midweek. Bowen missing his penalty and that huge chance for Thomas Sujek on the cutback. But I want to talk about the forward end. Because Darwin did look exciting. Lots of shots in the first half. Hit the post. Good save from Fabianski and a great header. Are you tempted at 8.8 .8 mil? Yes, I am. I'm tempted. <laughs> I'm only tempted because I now can't get Salah because... Um, left I, it too late. You left it too late. But I wasn't sure whether I wanted to take a minus four and get him in because I'm, I'm then downgrading Zaha to Eze. And I feel like 
is that a, a good move anyway? So I held off, but now one of them must be Salah's maybe risen in price because everyone's trying to get him back in. But now I'm thinking maybe doing Mitrovic to Darwin to have a Liverpool player for those games yeah. against Forest and Leeds and then maybe upgrading Trossard to someone like Foden. How have you got so much in the bank? I really don't. You've got four mil in the bank. <laughs> four mil in the bank. I don't know what I did, like who I actually got rid of to get Trossard in. To, to have million. that, yeah, I don't it's know. It's crazy. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's criminal almost. Yeah, I know. Especially when I'm doing this badly. Why have I got four million in the bank? Yeah, but anyway, I'm not sure. that is what I'm tempted by. However, Darwin did come off after 45 minutes um, in that West Ham win, and I think because I think people were quite surprised, yeah. being like, "Why have you brought him off?" But he did confirm in his post-match interview that I think Darwin felt a little tweak in his hamstring, and he just wanted to bring him, bring him off just to, as a precaution. So I'm definitely going to be listening to Jurgen Klopp's press conference ahead of that game against Forrest just to confirm because I'm not going to be making taking a minus four to put someone in that potentially might not play. But I am very, very tempted by by um, Darwin. But I'm also a little tempted by Firmino. He's Liverpool's highest scoring player in FPL this mm. season. Um, and if and if Darwin's out, then I'll go Firmino because I do, I do feel like I probably need a Liverpool attacker in my team for these two games. And I quite like, you know, one of these two will be a differential because yeah. everyone's going Salah. So it's maybe quite nice to have someone different. You were saying you're not yeah. tempted by Darwin, but now maybe are you tempted by I Darwin? I am, I actually am. I actually am because I didn't think I had a route to Darwin, but I, you know, Newcastle got some tough fixtures and I'm potentially thinking I drop Callum Wilson, bring Darwin in. And during the week when I needed to shift Reese James, I actually went Reese James to Robertson. Mm. And Robertson, obviously, I thought after that brilliant oh, yeah, performance of the weekend play, was going to be nailed on back in the side but then we're straight out of the Simicast. team again for Simicast and I just can't take that rotation risk so I'm tempted to go something like um, Robertson to Diogo Dalot to free up the funds of going to Darwin Nunes yeah. and Wilson and take a, a minus four hit because I agree I think Darwin's a really good differential you know his ownership's just 6% and look at those fixtures Forest, Leeds, Southampton, Villa, Leicester yeah. even like Brentford, Brighton I think they are really good fixtures and Darwin has looked really good in the last yeah. couple of weeks when he's played. I know that he's like a bit of a meme online and people kind of banter him mm. for his first touch and that, but he's, he's getting shots off from really good positions mm. and he's constantly testing the keeper. So I'm very tempted by Darwin. And I also think like, Salah's not a necessity. Salah hasn't done enough across the across the the ten or eleven game weeks. Not if you've got to, Haaland. No, not if you've got Haaland to to like be panicking about not having Salah. I understand why a lot of people went for Salah mm. because obviously he had that one good game week. People thought Liverpool were sort of back. I suppose they are in a way, but their fixtures are now very good. So I can understand it, but I don't think it's a necessity to have Mohamed Salah in your team these days. It's a necessity to have Erling Haaland. It's not a necessity. Salah was always that player, yeah. but he's not that player anymore. And he, he might be that player come, I don't know, four, five, six game weeks time, but I haven't seen enough from him. So actually that's why I'm not too upset. You know, last season, if I couldn't have Salah, I'd have been like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Yeah. Whereas now I'm like actually open to having either Darwin or Firmino and just having a Liverpool player. So let us know what you're going to do with Salah. Are you going to try and get him in or are you going to opt for maybe Darwin or Firmino like us as well? All right, let's wrap up with our captain's <laughs> picks then. Is as there if there's any much point? debate. Yeah, I mean, we're both going Holland, aren't we? At home to Brighton. Yeah, I think so. Like, you know, it's it was fun having a week where you couldn't captain Erling yeah. Haaland. And actually, the week before that, me and you didn't actually captain yeah, Haaland, but we could have had the chance. We both went Kane and it paid off. So I think there is scope now to potentially look for other options. However, like KDB, maybe if, if you've still got KDB, if you're one of those players that maybe benched him, he could be a good option against Brighton because they've mm. had a rest now. But I imagine most of FPL will be captaining I agree Erling I Haaland. think I'll be going Erling Haaland taking it off of Wilson who had, <laughs> who had it midweek if he's I'll still I'll be taking team. it off of Kane as well uh, so. let us know who you're going to captain though in the comments below that's it for another game week uh, Liv anything to shout out before we, before we wrap up I think the deadline this week is back to back to normal is, yeah. 11 on Saturday morning um, so make sure you get all your transfers done by then and let us know who you've captained good luck and we will see you all next week 